Hi guys and welcome to my review of the Microsoft Lumia 640. It is a budget device, but in so many terms it is quite comparable to the Nokia Lumia 830 I just recently tested. And throughout the whole video I will always compare them to because it's the only other Windows phone I know. But there are so many similarities and I want to know if this one is actually a quite a good competitor and makes it even worth not spending the extra money on the 830. So we will see this in my full review right now. So let's start off with the design and build quality. As you can already see, we have quite a vibrant blue, but it is also a little bit glossy. The small little thing I have about this is it can be very, very grippy like it is now, but if you have maybe slightly more greasy hands, it can be almost like a bar of soap. So it really depends on your texture of your hands. It can be quite slippery, but also very grippy. In most of the cases, it was quite totally fine though, after all. Here we have the camera and the flash. Otherwise, one thing I have to mention a little bit, if you can maybe hear this, this part here is a little bit loose because you can take off the shell and you have a dual SIM SD card slot and maybe one of the noses sometimes can break in so you have this little click so it should be happening but the way you have to open actually the case is a bit odd because you have to push here and then press so be a little bit aware of that otherwise the buttons nice tactile clicky feedback I still think the power button position is a little bit too low because I would actually prefer it here the natural way, but it is quite okay after all. And most of the times you don't even have to use it. Why? Because this is a really nice thing. You have double tap to wake the screen. And in this case, since you have the navigation bar, which is an on-screen navigation bar, you double tap the navigation bar and hence double tap to sleep, which is a really handy feature. And most of the times I didn't even use the power button. That is quite nice. It also does support the glance feature from Windows. So if you know that this is where the notifications get shown, kind of like this. Not every Windows phone supports it, this one does. And I know a lot of people compare this device ra rather likely with the 735, which isn't everywhere available, which doesn't have this feature. The 830 did, so quite comparable here as well. And the top, on the top we have the headphone jack, and on the bottom we have the micro USB. That's pretty much it. If we slightly compare it with a device like a 5.2 incher from Android, this is a flagship device. As you can see, it is a little bit less tall. The width is pretty much the same, but it is of course quite a bit thicker, even though the battery is actually bigger. If we compare it though with a quite small 4.7 incher, you will notice it is quite a bit bigger. In thickness, they are pretty much the same. And if you can actually see, it, there is a little bit of curve. So it is definitely nice to hold in the hand. It is a little bit bulky and boxy. That can't be, I can't say that isn't the case because sometimes it was a bit hard, but usually on Windows Phone, you don't have to stretch it. So it wasn't the case that it was an issue. So is it, it feels quite robust, but still glossy. If it gets scratched, will look quite nasty, but it gets the job done quite nice. So let's take a look at the display now. We have a 720p display with a diagonal of 5 inches. And before I'm going to actually show you the qualities, let me show you something else. Because the great thing about these devices on Lumias, we have color profiles, which is really nice. You have the standard mode, which is quite accurate, quite neutral. You have a slightly boosted vivid mode that I actually prefer. It gets slightly more towards an AMOLED feel. You also get cool if you want the cooler colors and you have advanced with color temperature turn and color saturation you want it if you wanted to do it your way. You can use standard but in this case let's just use vivid because I actually really like the vivid mode. So about the display now itself. 720p on 5 inches still is in most of the cases well sharp only in a zoomed out view in the browser. I noticed it is not that sharp but it does quite a good job as you can see here. No, no really any complaints. It is still a great thing. The white Really great white point, not too yellow, not too cold, also so good job here. If you check the black, the jack the black is quite deep, it is quite okay, but at least on my review unit, oh sorry for the zoom, let me quickly get it. At least on my unit, I had the issue that I had a slight green hue 
and I talked to Microsoft. They told me that it definitely must be a defect and they offered me to send me a second unit, but I think it's okay. So don't mind that it must be on this unit. Nothing to say otherwise. The colors, as you can see here, with the right profile, look very vibrant, very vivid. So the only maybe smaller complaint I would have are the viewing angles because they will get, for example, the white here, will get quite fast a, a gray. And this is the terms, as you can see here. So they are quite stable, but in a very narrow field. If you get them, you will see colors will get quite a dull pretty fast that's the only thing and the black could still be a little bit deeper one because i noticed once you have the navigation bar in a very dark room you don't see it doesn't feel like it is black it's more like gray but it's okay after all okay so let's check the sound now let me go into it and start it right now Okay, this is a full... So my opinion on the sound, as you can already see here, it is a backfiring one and a quite small hole can be easily blocked as you maybe noticed on the demo. So I have to say, in terms of maximum volume, it is most of the times okay, definitely nothing to really brag about. But as you also heard, there is no bass at all. The mids are a little bit there, but mostly highs that are not really harsh, but still it is also quite distant sounding because firing away from you. So you definitely need the right grip as I showed you on the video. Yeah, it gets the job done, but definitely not quite as good as the 830. It can't compete with that. So there is, there is definitely some things to improve. It, it is okay, but still. If you check the performance now, let's get into a Twitter app. And this is only the one obvious thing. Apps need quite a bit of time to load, but this seems to be a general Windows thing. But once you are in the app, as you can see here, extremely battery smooth. Of course, it always has to reload. So this, this is a small thing on Windows phones with one gigabyte that I don't like so much. But as you can see here, this is the really great performing device and the browser is pretty much the same. One thing that I would, to notice though, would like to notice, to mention. I think in personal com uh, comparison with the 830, this device feels quite a bit smoother and don't mind, quite a bit smoother, but not as fast. So there is a slight diminishing in terms of speed, but therefore it felt definitely smoother. The 830, at least in most of the cases, if you do this, if you go and switch things and, and in this animation, there were stutters, which I didn't have on this device. So it is definitely, as you can see here, quite a bit smoother, but maybe not as super fast because I think apps load, app loading times were a little bit longer. So that's one thing to keep in mind, but otherwise the performance was quite good. Really, really extremely smooth but still with the caveat of one gigabyte of RAM, so apps will need to reload pretty much constantly. Okay, if you check the battery now, a full charge takes three hours and 10 minutes. It is quite a bit long. We have a 2,500 milliamp hours battery, which is quite big and also the battery life was quite good. I would expect over the course of one day to get, if you are at the medium, to slightly higher brightness setting, at least four hours of screen on time, I would even say easier four and a half, and maybe five hours. Over the course of two days, because of the excellent standby drain of maybe just half a percent an hour, I would say about maybe three, three and a half hours are still possible because there is practically no standby drain. So the battery life is still very great, is better than the 830, but also not that much, but still definitely noticeable. So one thing I wanted to notice if we check the settings now for the sound, for the software. If you never used Windows Phone, it would take too much time to show off everything. But you can maybe check the video that I made for 10 pros and cons just to see what you can expect on Windows Phone. But a few things that I wanted to mention, and if you know Windows Phone, you pretty much know what to expect here. But as I said, you have the great things like 
glance you have double tap to wake double double tap to sleep you also have the color profiles and what i also really like and i have to search for it a little bit for audio this is quite nice you have an equalizer here and you even have an enhancement option so in terms of software I don't think Windows can show off any much more. And if you know Windows, you know what to expect. You get all the great Lumia features. So quite a good if you are okay with Windows. If you never used Windows coming from iOS or maybe Android, there will be quite a transition that you have to make. But still, you should make you should be aware of that before you maybe check it maybe in the store or so. Okay, let's get to the camera now. The camera is quite nice, it is quite sharp, but just in comparison more with the 830 for example, it isn't quite as sharp, quite as detailed, but still if you compare the price, this is still after all about $100 less, you get a really amazing camera performance and qualities in this price range because the the white balance was quite nice the colors were really accurate and for the amount of pixels we have it was still quite sharp and detailed you have the very powerful lumia software that allows you a lot of manual optimizations if you wanted to get it done so for the camera in this price range it will be really hard to beat after all for the video qualities also still very great very smooth the zoom was a little bit of a thing because, the, I mean, the autofocus, it is not a smooth autofocus, but it works quite reliably once it knows what to actually focus. So, that's it for the camera. I am, I, I could say I'm impressed in this price range to get a camera that good. So, nothing here to say. Otherwise, let's get to the recap now. Build and design. Yeah, it is a little bit bulky. It is a little bit on the thicker side but it is not really heavy or so it is definitely a little bit more boxy and bigger than for example the 830 but the quality itself is good i'm not the biggest fan of the glossy plastic and i would have preferred something more like matte but otherwise it is okay the display overall in this price range is good not quite on the level of the 830 the 830 were in pretty much every aspect just a little bit better especially in the black but otherwise it was quite solid the viewing angles were maybe the biggest weakness but if you usually look straight forward no problems at all the sound is definitely i would say the weakest point because quite shallow quite distant sounding not really rich so I would say mostly for the basic stuff, but if you want to enjoy a lot of media on this device, then you should maybe look for something else. In terms of performance, really pretty much the same as the 830, which is still their mid-range flagship, at least they want to call it so. Very, very smooth, still quite fast, slightly less fast than the 830 in my opinion, but therefore smoother because I didn't have the starters in the transitions as I had with the 830. So all fine here, comparing that it is a mid uh, a low budget device. As for the camera, no, for the battery first, battery life was quite good. The battery charging time were a little bit longer, but therefore it held up quite nice. I would expect four, four and a half hours, maybe even five hours and over the course of two days due to the great standby drain, three hours should still be possible. Now to the camera. Camera was very solid, quite good pictures and especially for this price range it will be hard to beat. So quite sharp, quite detailed, quite accurate, nothing really to say otherwise. And the software like I said, if you know Windows then you know what to expect and you will be happy with it. Coming from anything else there will be definitely some adjustment time. Leads me to the end. Would I recommend it? In this price range with $150 in the Windows segment, from what I know, there's only the Lumia 70, 735 and then the next step would be the 830. I can't say anything about the 735 because I never tried it, but compared to the 830, the 830 has the slightly better sound, the quite a little bit better camera, better display, better build quality. But in terms of performance and overall experience, it is pretty much very, very comparable because you have to see it like this, if it's worth 100 more. The camera is for 150 and I saw this device here on sale already, uh, like two times for 120 euros. That is half of what the 830 costs. So I, I couldn't justify paying twice for every, every little aspect getting a little bit better. The display is just a little bit better. The sound is a little bit better, the camera is a little bit better and the performance isn't even better. 
because if you don't have them side by side that this definitely felt a little bit smoother maybe not faster but still overall on the same level so finding something better from 120 to 150 dollar in the windows segment will be quite hard if you go to other platforms then but then it will be a completely different comparison if you then go to like a Moto G or so because the difference is made mostly in the operating system and this will make the choice in my opinion so you got all the pros and cons now it's up for you to decide let me know what you think of this device if you ever played with it i was quite okay quite happy with it for a budget device in this price segment there's really not a lot to complain so this was my review of the microsoft lumia 640 until next time bye i'll be back as you can already see we have quite a vibrant blue but it is also a little bit glossy the small little thing i have about this is it can be very very grippy like it is now but if you have maybe slightly more greasy hands it can be almost like a bar of soap so it really depends on your texture of your hands it can be quite slippery but also very grippy in most of the cases it was quite totally fine though after all here we have the camera and the flash otherwise one thing i have to mention a little bit if you can maybe the natural way but it is quite okay after all and most of the times you don't even have to use it why because this is a really nice thing you have double tap to wake the screen and in this case since you have the navigation bar which is an on-screen navigation bar you double tap the navigation bar and hence double tap to sleep which is a really handy feature and most of the times i didn't even use the power button that is quite nice it also does support the glance feature from windows so if you know that this is where the notifications get shown kind of like this not every windows phone supports it this one does and i know a lot of people compare this device ra rather likely with the 735 which isn't everywhere available which doesn't have this feature the 830 did so quite comparable here as well and the top on the top we have the headphone jack and on the bottom we have the micro usb that's pretty much it if we slightly compare it with a device like a 5.2 inch from android this is a flagship device as you can see it is a little bit less tall the width is pretty much the same but it is of course quite a bit thicker even though the battery is actually bigger you hear this this part here is a little bit loose because you can take off the shell and you have a dual sim sd card slot and maybe one of the noses sometimes can break and so you have this little click so it should be happening but the way you have to open actually the case is a bit odd because you have to push here and then press so be a little bit aware of that otherwise the buttons nice tactile clicky feedback i still think the power button position is a little bit too low because i would actually prefer it here hi guys and welcome to my review of the microsoft lumia 640 it is a budget device but in so many terms it is quite comparable to the Nokia lumia 830 i just recently tested and throughout the whole video i will always compare them to because it's the only other windows phone i know but there are so many similarities and i want to know if this one is actually a quite a good competitor and makes it even worth not spending the extra money on the 830 so we will see this in my full review right now so let's start off with the design and build quality 